You can spot Bento Grid everywhere these days, from websites and apps to operating systems, all thanks to its sleek and modern layout. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through creating a flexible Bento Grid in Figma. So let's jump right in. First, I'm going to create a frame. I'm going to hit A on my keyboard and I'm going to choose the desktop frame. And the next thing we need to do is create our layout grid. So while my frame is selected, I'm going to head over to the design panel. And from here, I'm going to hit this plus button to add a layout grid to my frame. Then I'm going to click on this little icon. And from here, I'm going to choose columns. And I'm going to set the count to 12 because we need 12 columns. I'm going to set the type to stretch. The reason I'm going to set it to stretch is because I'm going to make it flexible. So we get the responsive effect. The width is auto. I'm going to set the margin to 24 and the gutter should be 24 as well. But we are not done yet. We need rows as well. So while my desktop frame is selected, I'm going to add another layout grid to my frame and this time I'm going to set it to rows and the count is going to be 6 instead of 12. The type is going to be stretch, the margin and gutter are going to be 24 because we need to make sure that we have the exact same margin and gutter for both our horizontal and vertical grids. All right, our grid is ready. Now it's time to divide our main frame, which is this desktop frame into smaller boxes. So what I'm going to do is hit A to select the frame tool and I'm just going to draw a simple frame. As you can see, while I'm dragging, this new frame's boundary snaps to these grids and that's exactly what we need. So depending on the hierarchy of your content, you can decide how big this box should be. Obviously you can change it later, but keep in mind that depending on the importance of your content and how you want to direct the user's eyes, you can adjust the size and placement of these small cards, let's say. Okay, so here is my first frame. I'm going to call it card and let's add a fill to it. I'm going to make it, let's say blue something like this looks good okay i'm gonna make it a bit larger like this and now i'm gonna duplicate it i'm gonna hit ctrl d or command d and let's move it down just like that let's duplicate it once again i'm gonna put one right here let's make it a bit larger let's say we want to place something very important right here so that's why this one this box takes up five columns instead of three. Now let's duplicate this one, move it right here and make it smaller like that. And just duplicate it once again and place it right there. As I mentioned before, you can arrange them however you want. I'm gonna duplicate this one, move it right here. Let's increase its width and just decrease its height like that. I'm going to duplicate it once again, put one right there. Let's duplicate it. All right, I'm going to move it right there. Let's make it a bit larger like this and let's increase its width as well. I'm going to duplicate it once again. Let's place one right here, but a bit smaller. And I'm going to repeat the same thing to create a unique layout like that. Okay, so here is our Bento grid. I can just select this desktop frame and select all the children inside, all the elements inside by just hitting enter. And I'm going to increase their corner radius to make them rounded. I'm going to set it to 32. All right, our grid is ready. Let me just hide these two grids, but it's not flexible. So if I select this desktop frame and I try to adjust the width and height of this frame, look what happens. As you can see, they are not responsive. You see that? So how can we fix this issue? Again, we need to select our desktop frame, hit enter to select all these cards. Then we need to head over to the constraints section. And from here, I'm going to adjust the constraints to left and right. And as for the vertical constraint, I'm going to set it to top and bottom. Now, if I select my desktop frame and I try to adjust its width, as you can see, we get this flexible Bento grid layout. It's so cool, isn't it? Now let's say you want to add some content to these cards. So I'm going to select all these cards and I'm going to run the Unsplash plugin right here. And let's just insert some random images here. 
there we go here we have our photos and since these images by default are set to fill if I just select one of these cards and I head over to the image settings you'll see that by default it's set to fill so if I try to adjust the width and height of this main frame look what happens you see they try to take up the whole available space within these card frames which is exactly what we need but you might say Arash wait here we have only one image inside these cards what if you want to add more content to these cards what if I want to add text layers or uh, other images to these cards and still make them responsive well let's take this to the next level and I'm going to show you how to do it let's say you want to add two text layers to these cards okay so here I'm going to hit T on my keyboard left click to create a text layer let's decrease the font size to maybe 36 and I'm going to type title like that let's put it here I'm going to duplicate it hit ctrl D or command D move it down and here I'm going to type description there it is and I'm going to make it medium and just make it smaller let's say 24 now we need to use auto layout here I'm going to hold down the shift key on my keyboard to select both of these text layers and I'm going to hit shift and a on my keyboard to add auto layout to them if you're not sure how to use auto layout yet you can check out the auto layout tutorials on my channel to be able to comprehend what I'm talking about here okay so I added auto layout to these two text and I'm going to rename it to text there we go and now I'm going to select this card and I'm going to turn it into an other layout frame. I'm going to hit shift and A just like that. As soon as I do that, it tries to hide the content inside and it's fine. We are going to fix that. As you can see, while this card frame is selected here, the resizing options are set to hug and hug. That's why it tries to hug the content inside. But now what I'm going to do is select this desktop frame and just unhide these layout grids for a second. I'm going to align this card with my grids and just increase its height and width like that. And now, as you can see, the resizing options are set to fixed. And that's exactly what we need. And we can now just hide them again. OK, but we are not done yet. Now we need to select this text frame inside and change the horizontal resizing option to fill container to make sure that it takes up the whole available width within this card frame considering the padding we set for it. OK, I can set the padding to 48 and 48. And also I'm going to select this text frame, hit enter to select these text layers inside and change the resizing option to fill container just like that but you might say why did I do that let me turn it back to hog content for a second and just select this desktop frame and I try to resize it as you can see it's not responsive so you might say okay we need to select this card and just change the constraints to left and right and top and bottom let's give it a try okay our card is responsive but look what happens when I shrink it more and more. You see that our text layers are not responsive. So to fix this issue, we need to make sure that the resizing option for these text layers is set to fill container. And now if I go ahead and just adjust the width, look what happens. You see, now our texts are responsive. OK, good. To increase the visibility of these texts, we can just select this card and just add a dark overlay to it. I'm going to increase the opacity to 50. And there we go. Here we have a responsive card with some text layers inside. But now let's try something else. Let's say you want to have an image inside and a text layer and you want to make sure that both of them stay at the center of this card, no matter how big or how small this main frame gets. Let's give it a try. I'm going to select this card and I'm going to remove this image. Let me change its color to something like dark gray. I already prepared a text layer and an image. It's right here. I'm going to copy them, both of them, and just paste them inside. So here is this iPhone image. I'm going to scale it down a bit like that. And here is the text. I'm going to move it down. Let's scale it down. Something like this. 
Let me select this frame and try to adjust its width and see how it works. As you can see, this image is shrinking. That's not what I want. So what we should do is select this image and this text, both of them basically, and just change their constraints to center and center like this. And for this one, also center and center like that. And now let's see how it works. Okay. If you want the image to stay at the bottom of this card, you can set its vertical constraint to bottom, but make sure that the horizontal constraint is set to center. Now, no matter how big it gets vertically, the phone always stays at the bottom of this card. If you want to learn more about UI UX design principles, make sure to check out this video right here. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more UI UX design tutorials. Have a great day and see you soon.